all, thank you to everyone who's joining us in the audience. We have a really fantastic panel with us today. My name's Holly Barrett. I'm the executive director at the Downtown Improvement District. My organization um, does a whole bunch of things, but in general, our mission is to take care of the public realm. And that's everything from picking up litter to planting uh, trees and flowers, uh, to working with the city to make sure the trash cans are in the right place and that they're being uh, well maintained and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then we have uh, an advocacy arm where we work very closely with the city, with developers, with residents. We act as a liaison for any kind of issue you can imagine. Everything from, hey, this stoplight is out to um, we've got a new development going in. What's the, the TIF financing look like for it? So it, that, that arm is, uh, is kind of big. Um, and then we also do activation and security. Um, our activation, for the most part, our activation programs look like uh, supporting some of the major events that are coming down here, making sure that our businesses, if they're having a, a, um, a sale or an event, um, that we get them some promotion. Um, and then we do have a couple of small activation events that we do, like outdoor boot camp and that kind of thing. When we're not in a pandemic, we also run an ambassadors program that looks very similar to um, the Visit Omaha folks at the, as the, at the visitor center. We've got people that hang out on our busy corners and direct tourists and guests to various places. And that's a lot of fun. We don't have them out right now. They're, they're, um, they're just not feeling like we wanna do that just yet. So, uh, but we're getting back there. Um, but the arm of our organization that we're really gonna be talking about today is our SAFE program. Um, we do a couple different things. First of all, we have a private security program uh, that we work with, and we have a representative from Lionsgate. Uh, Calvin Jones is one of the owners and lead guys up there. Um, our private security guys are out there to, to be presence and to be eyes. Um, they don't generally do a whole lot of um, actually making, um, they, they don't do citations and they don't you know make arrests or anything like that, but they will um, you know, go in there if there's a situation and they'll try to defuse it. Uh, and if not, then their job is to contact the police and then work with them in that aspect. Uh, they also just literally are our presence, just walking up and down uh, in a uniform, making people feel uh, confident and, and safe. If they're, uh, we get a lot of folks down here that are not used to being in downtown. So they're, you know, it's a different kind of uh, tourist that we would see than the people that live and work down here. Um, we also work very closely with the police department. So we've got uh, Dave Hanzik and uh, Kathy Bell Castro, Captain Kathy with us today. And um, we, our job to work with the police is to make sure that we have our people in the right place, that we're responding to issues that they see. And uh, again, we sort of do a dual advocate role where somebody will be having an issue that they think the police need to know about um, or perhaps the police are having an issue that they think we or our residents and businesses need to know about. So there's a lot of information sharing. Um, we've got a couple of really phenomenal panelists with us today. Uh, let, me, let me jump in real quick. The whole point of this conversation today is to uh, really talk about some of the uh, interesting issues that, that we run up against when we have a whole bunch of different kinds of folks living and using downtown. So we tend to think that downtown is for absolutely everyone and uh, trying to figure out how we can all live here together peacefully um, is, uh, is our goal. So what we're trying to do is address some of the issues that we, we as the lay people, the businesses, the residents uh, that we run into, uh, things like panhandling or maybe someone sleeping on the corner, just things that make people feel a little uncomfortable. And how do we react to that? Who, who do you talk to? What do you say? Um, and is it, is it a situation that merits calling in someone for a match? We've got a fabulous representative from our street outreach team. Is it someone that we send all the way to a shelter? We've got Linda Cuomi with um, uh, Sienna Francis House. Or do we actually call the police? Uh, or we have a whole new program that you're gonna be hearing from, um, uh, from our old market association friends which is literally a business to business, business to police, um, just a, a, an open line of communication saying, we've got an issue going on here, how do we handle it? And those are the kinds of solutions that we're looking for, are, are those kinds of uh, community interactions where we're getting people services if they need it, or we're addressing an issue without it escalating if we can. 
um, and then you know trying to educate the public about um, what's appropriate and um, and when is it time to actually be nervous? When is it time to to you know just try to find another solution? So I'm going to introduce all of our panelists and have them uh, talk about who they are and what they do. And then I'm going to throw out a couple of, of scenarios that we see a lot, and have them sort of respond or have them respond to us with advice, um, what they would suggest, that kind of thing. And then we're going to open it up for some uh, Q and A. So we've got two ways that you can ask a question. You can either write a question in the Q and A box down at the in the found in the bottom um, uh, toolbar. And all of those questions will get addressed at the end. And if we get through all of those questions, I'm then going to try to open it up to the, the audience. And we, we will have time, hopefully, to hear from a couple of people, in your own words, what you're hearing and uh, seeing and how you're dealing with things and um, you know, see if we can't help answer some questions or concerns that you might have. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start uh, with our panel. We, we've got Captain Bel Castro with the Omaha Police Department. Captain, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for having us. Dave Hanzik, who works the Riverfront Patrol, the day shift is actually on as well. So hopefully we can answer any questions that you all might have, but we appreciate being invited. And um, I was gonna say, if you want me to start with the presentation, I think we're just doing introductions now. So thank you for having us. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we have Randy McCoy with Metro Area Continuum for Care or of Care for the Homeless. This is our street outreach guy. He's fantastic. Randy, take it away. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting us here today. Uh, I'm Randy McCoy. I'm the Executive Director with Match. We are thrilled to have you. Thanks for joining us. Then we have Linda Tomey with Sienna Francis House. Hi, I'm Linda Tomey. I'm the Executive Director of Sienna Francis House. Santa Francis House has been serving the Omaha downtown area since 1975. We provide emergency shelter to adult men and women. We have 462 emergency shelter beds, 100 for women and 300-ish, 350 for men. We also have an addiction and alcohol and drug treatment in our miracles program, which is a nine month program um, for anyone. Most people don't know that we do that here. So I wanted to share that. And we also have 48 apartments on our campus for individuals who are formerly chronically homeless and have a disability. So we do a lot of work in terms of housing for folks from crisis housing, which is emergency shelter to long-term housing. So we're happy to be invited today to have this important discussion about um, all of our community members and how we can best work together and serve the Omaha Metro. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Linda. Sorry, I, 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 we were just having a conversation about mispronouncing names. Sorry, I'm going to do it again, probably. <laughs> all right, next up, we have Shelly Stokes and Chip Allen with Old Market Association. Chip is our current board president and Shelly is our board treasurer, among a million other things. Um, Shelly is also the uh, lead contact person for the business to business conversation that I was talking about. She has, um, she helps promote uh, among the old market association members that they can contact her with issues and then she has access to um, a fantastic group of, of uh, officers that she talks to. So Shelly, go ahead. I am, as she said, I'm Shelly Stokes. I'm with the old market association. I also work for Spaghetti Works. Um, what we did was we joined forces with the uh, police department, the Omaha Police Department. Um, Captain Bel Castro has been instrumental in that. And we have a group that then we send issues to and problems that we have in the area and they respond back with how we should handle that or what's the best way to treat it. And sometimes it's just putting them on alert that something's happening that we need to address. So it's been new. We've been doing it now probably the last six months or so. And I think it's it's working very well so far. We've done a lot of, of good things and we've gotten a lot of, of things moved around and changed. Yeah, it's pretty great. Chip, do you wanna say something? Yeah, uh, my name is Chip Allen. Uh, I am the president of the Old Market Association. I also work for Upstream Brewing Company next door to Shelly. Um, we've really done a lot of work uh, and I gotta give Shelly all the credit here cause she's been doing a lot of it is in regards to making sure that we're opening up lines of communication, both with our residents and businesses and with the police department to make sure that we're addressing security issues appropriately in our area. And last but not least, 
Calvin Jones, head of our private security team with Lionsgate. Hi, my name is Calvin Jones. Um, I'm co-owner of Lionsgate Security. And for the last several years, we've been working um, uh, with the downtown improvement district, patrolling the downtown area, uh, trying to be eyes and ears, be a deterrent uh, in that area, and just try to pay attention to what's going on down there, report back, and uh, continue to work with the police department. And now these other agencies, I'm, I'm just hearing about the business to business and the street outreach program uh, be uh, another resource that we can use when my, my guys are out there. Uh, we can kind of work together with those two entities and um, try to deter things. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's the other point of, of this panel clearly is to get all of, of you, our panelists connected with our um, our audience and certainly with each other. Calvin, you can definitely um, use some of the folks you'll meet here. Um, okay, um, Christina, why don't you slide to the to the next slide? If I'm unless I can't remember. Yeah, there we go. All right. So this is just sort of some um, quick details about who we are. I'm not going to go too far into it. We have officers on um, uh, almost 24 hours a day at this point. And then during our high volume times, we, we really we, we bump it up a little bit. Um, during the month of June, um, we're also excited that we're having so many events coming back. Um, we do also work with the police department to get a, a few extra officers down here. We employ off-duty officers and, um, and they get out there into, into the public and, and our actual officers on the street. Um, okay, let's let's jump right into actually hearing uh, about some of the issues and um, then hearing from our panelists. So um, I'm going to throw out three scenarios that we see a lot that um, we need to make sure that we are handling the right way. Um, so the, the first and foremost, the, and they're basic, they're, they're things that all of you are probably running into. Um, we get panhandlers down in, all over downtown, but definitely in Old Market. Um, and it's a different kind of, a, of, a, um, of an activity when it happens in Old Market because the streets are a lot, the sidewalks are much narrower and uh, there's a lot of places where everybody is just sort of hanging out together. And so sometimes they rub shoulders and, and there's friction. We want to reduce that friction. Again, we believe downtown is for absolutely everyone. So we're just trying to figure out how we can make sure that we can all be here together without scaring or hurting each other, which doesn't happen that often honestly. Um, so the first thing we, we want to talk about is um, issues that, uh, that come up against with, with panhandlers. Uh, and then right there along that would be this idea of loitering. We, do, we don't ask that people move on if they're just standing there. We may ask if someone is setting up camp if they're, or if they're asleep. Um, but really what happens when we have those situations is that people who are not used to seeing the homeless community get nervous. And it's for sometimes, you know, absolutely no reason whatsoever, but it makes people uncomfortable, which they then go in and tell the businesses that they're experiencing. And then the businesses get real worried because it, it just creates a kind of an ambiance of, um, of fear and, um, and it's, it can make things very uncomfortable. So what happens in those situations is either someone panics and calls the, the 911, which, um, you know, while might be effective if, if the, the person they're calling on is actually doing something, is not effective in other ways. And one of the reasons we put together the conversation between old market businesses and the police department directly is that every officer handles things a little bit differently. So if we can be speaking directly to the officers who are on the ground, either in that beat or down there regularly, we can sort of figure out what solutions they're going to offer and, um, and, and cherry pick what's going to be the right one for each situation. We, we tell our businesses and our residents, if they come up against a situation that they are confident in saying, hey, you know, this is an, an appropriate thing to be doing if someone's being aggressive with panhandling or, um, or is, is literally setting up camp. We, we encourage people to just talk to the people that, that they're interacting with and find out what's going on and, and, um, and go from there. That doesn't always work. We have a lot of people who are sometimes real nervous and again, they'll jump the gun and they'll call, call 911, which is only effective if someone is actually breaking the law. And a lot of these folks are not breaking any laws. They are just making other people uncomfortable, which is what we're trying to eliminate. Um, so 
why don't we first and foremost, um, Shelly, I'd like to hear from you and I'd like you to talk about kind of some of the calls that you get and the emails. And then I'd like to hear from, from everyone else about, particularly from Randy and Linda, um, what, are our, what are better solutions than, than immediately calling the police? So. I think from our standpoint, um, we kind of treat the panhandling as long as it's not aggressive. So we have quite a few people that sit with signs um, asking for money. Obviously, they sit in certain areas with signs. As long as they're not aggressively asking for money, they're not blocking somebody from crossing the street, they're not taking up room on the sidewalk. Um, those are the issues that I think we've kind of come to the conclusion that those are the issues that we need to call in for police. Um, those are people that obviously we can't control, we can't, we can't do anything with. So the pandemic, for the most part, we do see quite a few people down here with signs and, and different things asking for money. Um, as long as they don't aggressively ask for it, they're not standing in somebody's way, they're not demanding it. Um, you know, we, we, that's kind of where we draw the line, I think. Um, Randy, would you talk a little bit about um, what your, your guys would do? What, what advice do you have for us when we come up against a situation like that? And again, I'm not actually just talking about panhandling. I'm talking about also about um, the, the guys that come and, and maybe set up camp. I, I think loitering is a different thing than setting up camp on a, in a, on a grander scale. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, you know, Shelly and, and you both have kind of talked about it. There's that kind of fine line distinction between people just hanging out uh, and people doing something that may be illegal or destructive or, or, or harmful to, to you know, businesses or other individuals uh, in the area. Um, if you see someone who uh, you, you believe is homeless or is having some kind of an issue, I think the first thing that we would ask you to do is uh, contact the street outreach teams. Um, I know that our, the outreach teams, uh, and, and these, these folks don't work directly for MATCH, we're kind of the coordinating entity. Um, but they work for uh, other agencies like Community Alliance, Sienna Francis, uh, Heartland Family Service, um, but, but to contact them and what they would do, and, and they, they frequent uh, the old market area and other parts of town uh, to try to make contact with individuals, to have a discussion with them about um, things that they need, uh, shelter options or other housing options that might be uh, available to them, um, other support services like addiction treatment, employment, uh, all, all kinds of things like that. Um, but they would engage with them. Um, frequently, they will know or have some familiarity with the individual. Um, somebody I see is asking for the number for the street outreach team. Um, and I can, I can give them to, to Holly to, to pass on. I can give her the flyer. But 402-740-1542. Uh, 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 or 402-830-2322. Uh, those are a couple of the numbers. Uh, and, and you can reach out to them. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, they, they frequent the old market area, but, but that I think would be the first, uh, the first step. If you, if you see somebody that you, know, you think is having a, a problem uh, or, or may cause a problem, um, you know, call, call the street outreach teams. I think certainly if there are um, things that would be, you, you know, people are doing things illegal, 911 is probably the people to call. Um, but if it's if it's just somebody hanging out and you think they need some kind of assistance or connected to services, that's that's the first step. And for those of you in the audience, especially um, the the folks who are asking for the phone number, um, we we will absolutely um, be putting out a whole bunch of information. We also um, can do um, more regular communications through our newsletter and Facebook and all of that providing a lot of these services, phone numbers directly to service providers, service providers like Santa Francis House and and some of the folks that Randy's talking about. Um, so that's that's a solution that the DID can help with is to get out that information a little bit easier. Um, Linda, do you wanna chime in? Thank you, Holly. So one is I think probably a lot of the businesses um, in the old market have questions about what do we do with panhandlers? I think the one thing that needs to be said here is we discourage people from giving panhandlers money. Mm -hmm. So we really, it'd be a better um, investment for someone who would give five or ten dollars to give it to one of the homeless organizations in the community to do this work because that giving them money kind of reinforces that activity outside of the business. So all of the best practices around panhandling have to do with really educating folks 
don't give panhandlers money. Donate that money to one of the local nonprofits or even, um, you know, the business district to invest in ways to manage um, that problem. I think the other issue that we want to talk about a little bit is when you're approaching people who have been homeless, these are very difficult or who are homeless. These are very difficult conversations to have. We want people to feel safe doing it. If you don't feel safe, don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, often it's best when someone has a relationship with somebody. So um, Randy's right. Reach out to the street outreach team. Um, you can call the Santa Francis Houses outreach staff. You can call the shelter. Um, if someone comes in and says, I don't know what to do. I don't have anywhere to go tonight. We could possibly at times come out and pick those people up if they're willing to come here. So there's lots of strategies, but I would just really um, proceed with caution if you're telling someone to stop doing something like stop um, handling, stop lawyering, if you don't know that person, because it could escalate rather quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also want to address, we, we, I still want to hear from our other folks, but um, we've already gotten some fantastic questions in the Q&A that are um, uh, dealing with much bigger issues than, you know, just what, what we're talking about here. So um, so we'll, we'll get into those. I promise we will answer those questions because they are some really good ones. But um, I'd love to hear from um, uh, Officer Hanzek, if you, you're not, Dave, <laughs> if you can chime in. Yeah, he might be busy. Um, uh, Kathy, Captain Bel Castro, why don't you talk to us a little bit about some of the things, some of the calls that dispatch gets and, um, you know, what some of the officers are, are doing? Sure. Um, we get a variety of different calls and specifically in regards to panhandling. I've attached what the actual ordinance is. And so hopefully you guys can see those on the side because, of course, there's a, a legal, you know, thing that we can address as far as an aggressive panhandler. And you'll see on the sheet basically what we can address from there. But um, as far as when people are asking for money, it is legal, of course. And so we want to make sure that we're allowing the legalities to occur. Now, if there's a consistent uh, repeated panhandling request, or if there's any touching, or if there is um, close to an ATM, different things like that, then the police can address it. Interestingly enough, like Officer Hanzik, who works in that, that beat area, along with his partner, they know a lot of the people. And so they've built a rapport. And so again, it's one of those things we're trying to make sure that we're getting the people that are in need the resources that they need. And that's why it's also so important for the open communication, because we'll see that there are people that maybe we can um, refer them out to some of the resources that we have, as well as maybe even like you know, the Francis House might have something else that we're not aware of, but we can refer them out to those situations to make sure that they're getting the assistance that they may need. Um, I want to touch on one thing that, that we're hearing from everybody right now. The, the, our experts that we have here, Santa Francis House, Match, OPD, um, they have relationships with these folks because a lot of our, our, of our homeless community, we know them by name. They're, they've been out there a, a long enough time that, that we recognize them um, I have, I, I just lost my little dog, but I had a dog and we used to walk all over the place and she had, had guys that she knew and would go up and lick their faces. And I mean, and they knew us. And so again, that having a relationship with individuals, regular individuals is definitely, a, um, is key to, to sort of, certainly to providing services. Nobody's going to accept services if they're not, but, um, but developing individual relationships with some of these folks has made me feel safer and, so that's another thing that, that we encourage our businesses to do is that if you have a, a regular folks that are out there, get to know them because it really does make it a lot easier to, to have interactions with them when you know their name, you know how long they've been out there and, and, um, and what they're thinking. Um, Calvin, can, can you speak a little bit to how our team interacts? Oh, you're muted, Calvin, sorry. Sorry about that. Because our guys have a dark uniform, a lot of times they think that we're police officers on a on first approach, which which helps. Um, but now that we have these uh, other resources that we can reach out to the, the street team and try to um, approach it holistically, if we got uh, some people panhandling and try to come at it at that point, um, which is a great resource for us. But a lot of times we get a lot of compliance, get them to move on just by approaching 
uh, approaching these individuals. Yeah, and that's that is always going to be our our favorite solution is um, is is to not have to have anything ugly happen and just be able to say, hey, this is not a good place for you, uh, because sometimes they you know it it, it just is a is a terrible situation and and sometimes it's not a terrible situation. It really does depend on on the time of day and where they are and uh, and so on and so forth. So like Shelley, being able to sort of know that fine line, it's important. Um, uh, Chip or Shelley, do you want to chime in with anything else? Um, I think it's important that what you were talking about a little bit, Holly, is, you know, when you're down in the district, we see a lot of the same faces over and over again. And if it goes back to what Linda was talking about, if you don't feel comfortable, don't have the conversation. But if you do feel comfortable, do have the conversation because you'd be amazed that you'll understand a little bit about their situation. And, but not only understanding their situation, they understand yours and you get a little bit more cooperation from them in regards to making sure that your guests don't feel uncomfortable, people in the area don't feel uncomfortable, that they're following the appropriate rules and law uh, help and even addresses the situation. Holly, could I add something kind of along those lines in, in what you were talking about earlier? Um, these are all people. Um, they are individuals just like every one of us. Um, they have uh, experienced uh, probably quite possibly some some pretty pretty horrible things in their lives. Um, some of them may be dealing with substance abuse issues that, that we can't really fathom or mental health, or physical health issues. And, and I think Chip is exactly right. If you do approach them, approach them like you would any other individual. Um, uh, yeah, they're experiencing homelessness. Yeah, they have had some some pretty horrific things happen to them, probably. Um, but but they're they're individuals, and they are going to uh, you know respond that way. Um, and once you get to know them, once you engage with them, um, just remember that they're, they're people too. Um, and I think Chip's Chip's right. Yeah, it, it changes everything when when you know each other's names. Um, okay, I'm, I had a couple other scenarios, but we've got a couple of really great questions here. So I'm going to jump into these questions and then, um, and then we can um, um, go from there. Uh, Christina, tell me administratively, can everybody see these questions? Yes, they can. Okay, now. perfect. We had another one, but I think the questioner took it out. But this first one. It's under answered if you. Oh, oh, it got answered. See, that's why I have Christina. <laughs> All right, so uh, so this first one about significant damage. Um, we definitely have seen situations where folks are setting up camp, and that is a very different situation, obviously, than loitering. Uh, and we do specifically in Old Market, but definitely up here in the Central Business District as well, we have a couple of little nooks that are, um, you know, I'm a camper. I walk by, I look and go, oh, yeah, that does look nice and cozy. And um, you know, those are those are the kinds of spaces that surprise people. So, for example, the, uh, down in Old Market, off of the passageway, there is a first floor entrance that has a stairway that goes down to the lower level, and um, and there there the security light on it is accessible, meaning it can be unscrewed. And it's uh, once you get down there, there's a lovely little alcove that is literally big enough for one or two people to sleep and stay warm. And it's out of the um, general public's view. So unless you're walking right down there and somebody moves down there or, um, or you're literally looking or you're trying to go down through that entrance, it's a really great place for, for people to sit. We also have some spots at 11th and Howard that uh, right there by Nouvelle Eve and the old market house space um, anywhere where we have uh, a business that, or an empty space where there used to be a business is a, is a place where we see people sort of congregating and setting up camp. So again, that's a different issue than loitering. And it can be very uncomfortable because they are, um, they are moving in and taking ownership. And, and that's a different mentality that we run into. And we see damage from it. Either we see damage to the building or we see lots of litter or they, you know, if they're there long enough, sometimes there's, you know, um, interesting issues that happen with human waste. Um, so, you know, we've, we've had a lot of things like that. The, uh, Dean Varner, this question is, um, is, is definitely something that, that we see a lot. So how do we deal with this? He's got a full-time security guard that goes around and asks people to move on, um, but they're seeing particular issues. They're seeing a lot of drug use right there. 
We don't see that a lot out on the streets, but we do see it down in those little hidey holes. So, um, so how, how, do we, how do we work with those folks? Let's start. Randy, why don't, why don't you start? Well, I hate to sound like a broken record, but uh, I would definitely, you know, uh, refer, call, call the street outreach folks. We have, over the last year or so, worked um, with uh, uh, the, the Parks Department uh, in the city of Omaha. Uh, so when they see those camps around the community, they reach out to the, the street outreach team. Usually they can respond within 24 hours of getting noticed uh, and, and getting noticed from the city. Uh, so basically what they'll do is they'll send their outreach workers over to, to talk to people. Um, and kind of had that conversation about uh, this is not the kind of place that you need to be camping. Uh, can we get you into a shelter? Can we get you connected to services? Uh, and, and they have those other conversations too about uh, don't leave your needles out or don't do that here or don't, you know, don't, don't set up shop uh, in this kind of an area. Um, uh, so again, uh, I, I hate to say street outreach, but that's probably the best, best, best first call to make. Okay. Um, so that they can reach out and engage those folks and either try to help them move on or move into shelter or somewhere else or, or let them know that uh, you, you can't stay here. Okay. Linda, as an actual service provider with programs that deal with these kinds of things, and, and I'd like to hear also um, the other half of Dean's question is talking about um, solutions that are, are much bigger than, than what we're going to be able to provide or even you as a shelter, but you have programs for addiction and, yeah. and traditional housing. Actually, that second half, I think, is easier to address. Okay. So um, I mentioned at the, at the beginning of the call, we have an 80-bed alcohol um, drug and treatment program for adult men and women. That is free. Um, we do not charge people for that. It's unique in the city of Omaha. You don't have to have a pair source. Um, so it, it's available. We've had openings since COVID started. COVID's been um, very strange on those type of programs. So we do have that um, drug abuse um, available, treatment available. I think the property damage is a very difficult issue. Um, we see a lot of property damage also here from the homeless population. Um, I know it probably feels a lot different, but we've talked about what are some of the strategies that we could engage in to try to minimize that. One of the things is we can't do this, but you could potentially do this as business owners, have some close property signs. That makes it illegal for people to be on your property or loitering in those areas. So um, I think probably someone from the police department would be better to talk about that process, but it is an application process if that's something. I also think, you know, lighting is always a great way to address some of those security things that may not be super expensive. So um, I, I do think that the property damage is a hard issue, particularly for your business owners. It's a hard issue for us. We run into thousands of dollars of dollars each year trying to repair things. But um, I would suggest that some of you might explore the closed property route and then also think about if there's ways that lighting can improve some of the nooks and crannies issues. Again, some of you are probably saying it'll just get broken out, but there may be some um, benefits to those discussions. Um, Linda, can you also talk a little bit about how Sienna Francis House advocates for um, um, more affordable housing and, and your transitional housing program in general? Yeah, so um, certainly having a housing available to everyone in our community is a goal for us and MATCH. Um, we think that there needs to be low barrier housing, housing that doesn't require people to quit using um, or to be under like compliance with medications. So our shelter here is based on that. People who come to the shelter there is no requirement that they are drug and alcohol free. A lot of them have mental illness that are untreated. Um, we kind of carry that principle through all of our programs. Um, we are also attempting to expand our affordable housing footprint for um, homeless through a cottages project on the north side of our property next year. So um, one of the solutions to this is more housing. Often people don't want um, formerly homeless people to be their neighbors, but we do know that um, when people get housed, their drug and alcohol um, use tends to just gravitate down. There's a lot of re research that suggests that living on the street is very traumatic, trying to meet your basic needs. So a lot of people use drugs and alcohol to cope. 
with the experience of living on the street. So we know when people get housed, there's a natural reduction in that. And also people's mental illness tends to get better when they're housed. Um, just the safety of having my own bed and apartment and not that hypervigilance and all of the energy that goes into maintaining yourself on the streets, those things tend to improve with housing. Yeah, definitely they do. Um, uh, uh, Tony uh, just ch uh, chimed in with a message. He is the, the folks that are uh, taking over the new, oh, oh, but, sorry, the old market house space. Um, and as he's pointing out, a lot of the solutions that, um, that have solved the problem of folks camping right there are literally just activation. They've got construction workers going in and out. It's no longer quite the um, comfortable place for people to stay. They also have very visible security cameras out there. So in addition to, um, um, in addition to better lighting and posting signs about closed properties and things like that, um, having those kinds of activation tools in place and, and presence. Again, a security camera is literally just presence. And so a lot of those things sort of dissuade um, that the behavior that we're trying to, to get rid of. So um, somebody else um, talked about uh, some fencing that had gone in under the 10th Street Bridge at Jones Street. Um, you know, those are, are their, their passive solutions to big problems and they're not always pretty and they, they don't feel compassionate by any means, but they are things that property owners can do um, to, to make the spaces that they have a little more um, inhospitable. We have seen in other cities, uh, we've got a couple of places that in, in public parking lots and, and on uh, various places on streets where they pipe in classical music uh, 24 hours a day, and it's quiet enough that it doesn't disturb people on the streets or residents living over the buildings, um, but it's enough of a dissuader that that people don't want to stop and, and set up camp there. And again, we're talking about a fine line between loitering and, and setting up camp, but um, but the, it's the folks that are setting up camp that, that sometimes we get the most worried about because it's very uncomfortable to go into those situations, and generally speaking, they're there um, for, for, for dark reasons. Um, some of the other questions that we have had, um, this is a good one. Um, sleeping in public, uh, again, talking about the difference between setting up camp and, and loitering. We do have no loitering laws in place, but we don't have any no sleeping in public laws. So this one would, I think, be um, best directed to uh, Captain Bill Castro, um, maybe even Calvin, if you wanted to join in. Um, wh what do we do, what can you do when we see that someone is actually setting up camp, but that there isn't uh, overt drug use or, and they're not being aggressive panhandling? What, what do we do in those situations? So a couple things, if, if you have private property, I mean, I think it was already mentioned about trespassing signs, et cetera, regardless that your private property, and that could be in from a door like a foyer a door well, being leaning up against a building that you own or rent. I mean, those things can be addressed by the police. If someone's just laying on the street without blocking a thoroughfare, that becomes a little bit different as far as us addressing that. But ultimately, if you have your own property and so forth, we can request that they leave uh, with your permission, basically. Um, they can be arrested for request to leave or with a trespassing. So I, I see that we get a lot of the complaints, especially during the winter, not necessarily um, the spring and summer in some of the sheltered areas, including even the parking garages, et cetera. Those are always things that you can call and we can follow up on for that. The bigger thing just to know that some of these are citations. And so, um, especially as we went into COVID, we were not booking in a lot of people into jail per se with the, the more lesser misdemeanor charges just because of, you know, keeping the capacity at corrections down. But I mean, again, if we're trying to make sure that people are getting the resources that they need as well, it's also another outreach that we can try to do so. And I just want to remind everybody, we do have a co-responder that's a mental health specialist. She is out on maternity leave right now, but that's also a resource that we utilize trying to make sure that we get the mental health aspect of things going on also. Um, Captain, is, is, is she, does she have like a, a, a number that people can call? Is she only reactionary? What, what, how do people get in touch with her? Yeah, I can get her number and put it in the chat. And then also just so you know, the officers, she usually listens to the radio when she's working. 
Um, if the officers call her directly, they can do that, but she does listen to the radio. And if there's any, any instance where we think there might be something where that somebody's in crisis, she'll actually ask the officers if they want her to respond with them. Okay, okay. fantastic. Um, we also got a number of questions or, or comments about um, um, uh, things that are not quite related to homelessness, but that are definitely issues that we run into that feel like security issues. Um, we've got a lot of buskers downtown. We also get a lot of teenagers down on skateboards. Um, as the summer ramps up, we're going to start to see more people out on scooters and bicycles and, and things like that. Um, so while this is not going to be directed towards our service providers, um, it is a fabulous question. When Again, these are, are they're things that are annoyances. Um, they're not necessarily illegal. A lot, some of these situations, when I'm talking about a skateboarder on a sidewalk, clearly that's illegal. Um, but how do we deal with those issues? And, and what's more important, when you call 911, when you see something happening, um, if it's not, it's not a priority, then dispatch will clearly um, drop it down a little bit, which means usually that the offender is done and has moved on by the time the officer actually gets there. What is a more effective way of dealing with those non-emergency but um, ambiance killers that, that are, are truly economic um, development issues? When we start to have uh, gangs of teenagers, which we've had a lot of gangs of teenagers on skateboards in Old Market this spring, just uh, you know, for one reason or another, um, we do also have uh, buskers that come out that are, are playing loud music or, or literally have speaker going with an amplifier. How do we deal with those kinds of things? Uh, Captain, why don't you start with this one? So yes, anytime you call 911, just know that everything is going to be prioritized. So if it's not an emergency, it may go as a lower priority. So we want people to recognize, I mean, we want to make sure our officers are being utilized in the best way possible. So in other words, if there's something that's emergent, the officers are going to respond more expeditiously. And of course, if it's a parking complaint, then it may be something that's less. Now, if it's a parking complaint that's blocking, that's going to be a higher priority for things as well. But again, I mean, if you ever have any questions about when to call 911 and when not to, we always recommend that you do call because they're going to divert you of how and where you should go from there. But some of the things that um, ultimately have questions about, and I think Shelly Stokes had mentioned it earlier, we do have lines of communication that we really want people to feel free that they can ask questions. And that can be through anybody in the old market associations, but also, I mean, we have emails, we can call the police department with the front desk and have somebody answer. But we want to make sure that everybody's questions are answered and that we get them. If we don't know those answers, we get them to the people that need be. Again, if it's something that you feel you need to have a police response, we always would prefer that you call 911 and then we can divert from there. So maybe this is a situation um, where getting that information out about the, um, you know, maybe calling Shelly or, or getting that information to OMA. Um, maybe that, that, that solution is a little bit better at that point because you can get it directly to the officers that are, are working that weekend. Um, maybe we can get that information faster to our Lionsgate officers. Um, so, so, and again, when I, those are our annoyances, but not necessarily illegal. Um, the, I, I have a joke that's kind of tongue in cheek, but I wanna remind our businesses and our residents, we live downtown. We choose to live down here because there is a lot of uh, urban activity and some of that urban activity is really gritty. And while it, it definitely is an annoyance, uh, it is a part of the urban fabric. So um, there's a little bit of acceptance that does have to sort of come into play. And there were a couple of questions about that. And, uh, and the truth is, is that that is actually a part of the urban fabric. So while we want to minimize the, the worst parts of it or, or the negative parts of it, we aren't trying to actually eliminate any of the activity. We are trying to find ways that we all live together down here. So um, that's just my plug. Anytime somebody calls and, and complains about a bar, I often, I often say, did you move in and was the bar already there? <laughs> so, you know, uh, just throwing it out there. We gotta, we've got to keep it in perspective that, that we do live in a city and we do have those situations. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, this is Shelly. I just want to add something to the conversation, especially that Captain Belcastro just had. The, the communication that we're talking about between the businesses and the police department that we've set up with through my email 
Um, what that does is create a, a lot of times the situations we get into down here cannot be addressed immediately because by the time the priority list gets up, by the time the police come down here, these situations sometimes have gone away, they've resolved, and then they come back again the next day. So by communicating through these channels and letting the police department know that we have an issue, um, skateboarders is one of the most recent ones that we've, we've been tackling. You can't catch a skateboarder by calling 911 obviously they're coming through the area, they're done, they're gone, they've already, you know, done whatever they've done. So by letting the police know about these situations, it just puts them on a little bit more alert to be watching for it and knowing that we have these issues because they obviously can't see everything. They're not, they don't have eyes on every street and every corner. So these conversations are ways for them to know where we're having issues at so that they can watch those areas. And we've had a couple areas where we've had uh, alley issues. And again, I can't call 911 and get a response fast enough sometimes because these people are on the move and they leave. But if I know it's a continual problem and we contact them, then that lets them run uh, search watches through those areas. And that's what's made this very effective. Uh, and I, there's also a, another question. And again, I keep talking about annoyances, but we do actually have a lot of noise violations. Diane Watson threw a comment out. Um, and Captain Bill Castro and I have talked about this a lot. I understand that it's really difficult to, you know, to gauge that kind of a, uh, a situation where um, we've got a couple of people who come down with the um, with motorcycles, and the the whole goal is to make noise and and stir things up. Um, we also do sometimes have buskers that are are way illegal. Um, the way Captain has explained that to me is that the only way they can see if it's illegal is to literally come down with a, a sound machine uh, to check it. And I don't believe that all the officers have that in the car. So again, when we're talking about, we also got another comment that, um, that, that we are, um, that we are, are catering to the homeless community. And, and we are a little bit uh, because it's a really difficult situation. We're trying to figure out what we can do here. We're getting off topic as far as, as issues that we're working with the homeless community, but the, the key takeaways here are how do we how do we better enforce laws that we have? And, um, and, and how do we make sure that those laws are, are doing the things that they're supposed to do that, they're, you know, that, that again, we're not citing someone for simply being on the street, um, but you know, if there's an issue. And I don't know that we can answer that right now, but, but the, for those of us, Captain Bel Castro, Linda, those of us who are on the major advocacy and, and, and services wing, those are questions that, that people have is that, that they feel um, that they are not being heard because they're not seeing action being taken. So they're, they're uh, I mean, we have excuses for everything, but that is a real feeling that's out there. And um, we also had a comment from Chaz Klein, who owns a couple of businesses in Old Market down on um, 11th and Howard and 10th and Howard. Uh, he's also an Old Market board, um, uh, board member. Um, and he is saying that there's not enough presence down there. So that's another thing. And again, those are very real perceptions, even though they, they, whether they are, 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 are true or not, we know where, where our officers are. Um, but those are, are the things that, that we feel sometimes. So the solutions that we would seek are, how do we get more presence down here without it being over the top? We don't want people to come down and say, oh my God, we're surrounded by police officers and security guards and there's lights flashing. It must be unsafe down here. There's a fine line between presence on the street to eliminate behavior as opposed to um, uh, citations um, and, and the idea of having to call to get a response. So again, we're, we're kind of getting off topic here a little bit. Um, I'm going to check questions real quick. Um, Oh, oh, that's a good one, Diane. Um, this is going to be a good question for, for both Linda and Randy. A lot of our homeless friends have dogs with them. Um, and um, I, I, my dog was always a lot of, uh, she would specifically make friends with those folks. Clearly, she knew they were animal people. However, a lot of the guys that have the dogs are, they are the, the dogs are not leashed, um, or if they are leashed, they're, they're being loud. Um, what, what do we do? How do we how do we deal with that specific situation? So I just want to jump in and say we accept dogs at the shelter with their owners. So that is not a barrier to someone coming into shelter. We do require that the dogs be vaccinated. 
we do not require that they be licensed by the city because that's kind of a more of an ordinance issue. Vaccination is a safety issue um, for people just in case the dog would nip somebody or something would happen. So it's the safety uh, requires the vaccination. So we do accept dogs. Um, you know, one of the things I think that has been kind of, I've been wanting to say continually is, Certainly when the weather gets bad, um, as business owners, the one thing that you can do is you can offer, um, hey, would you like to go to shelter? Um, we sometimes will Uber people to us. Um, sometimes we will send staff out and pick them up if they're willing to come in. But um, if you, that's one strategy I think that maybe we haven't talked about today is saying to someone, hey, um, you can't be here how can we help you? Would you like to go to shelter? We can call Santa Francis for you. You, you will have people who will tell you we're banned and barred and they're not banned and barred. Um, we hear that a lot. We Someone will say, well, so they, say, they say they can't come here because they're banned and barred. They may not choose to come there and we can't control control people's choice. But as um, you know, a group, that's one of the things that you can do is offer someone, would you like to go to shelter? We can make a call. We can see um, we have not had any situation in the past two years where we have not had a bed available to someone who wants to come in. Um, but we do accept the dog. So I just want to go back. One of the things you can do is, hey, you can't be here. Can we get you to shelter? Would you like to um, talk to somebody, the street outreach team? You know, shelter is a definite um, option for people who've been living on the streets. Omaha has a pretty has had prior to COVID a pretty small unsheltered homeless population. So the people that you are seeing, you know, you're talking about them as familiar faces. We know as a provider, a lot of our people a couple days in, a couple days out. So um, there's not a huge amount of people who never go into shelter among our street homeless population. So I think that's one of the things. Sometimes they just might not have the transportation to get over here. Okay, so that's fabulous to know. First of all, that you can help provide transportation, but also that you that you take dogs. That, that makes me feel good. Uh, Randy, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I guess kind of like you were talking about earlier, it's it's like anybody else who who brings their their pet uh, into the old market. I mean, I think they should be respectful for the the surroundings that they're in and follow whatever ordinances or or regulations are in place uh, with them. Um, if they're supposed to be on a leash, then you know, ideally they would be on a leash. Um, uh, again, uh, working with one of the the shelters in the community, working with street outreach to help make sure that people uh, have leashes available uh, for for their pets, uh, or that they are controlling them uh, in appropriate ways, is, is critically important. I know a lot of uh, communities, and, and and I think there are, there are options here for for people to get vaccinations and things like that for for their pets uh, are available. And and like Linda said. Um, uh, her program takes them, and I think some of, some of the other shelters will also uh, take pets. Um, and uh, you know, so so there are housing options for folks. But uh, I, I mean, I think uh, somebody mentioned, you know, there was a dog barking, uh, and I, you know, try to have that conversation. Um, you know, it's whatever. It's ten o'clock. We're trying to go to sleep. You know, what can the dog be quiet? Um, maybe the dog needs water. Maybe the dog needs some food. Um, you know, if you could. If, if that's the solution or if that's something that is needed and you feel comfortable, you know, sharing a bowl of water for the dog or something like that, that would be uh, fantastic. Okay. Well, we are, we are getting um, up to our hour and we need to end. And we had a couple of really amazing questions and I'm sure that there are people out there that have even more questions um, that we're not gonna be able to get to. We did have a couple of folks that were asking questions that were off topic, things like, um, what are we doing about alleys and that kind of thing. Um, we've got a ton of information. We're working with the Old Market Association on a million projects, including in an, a, a whole um, alley revitalization project. I would, um, I'd like to ask that anybody in the audience, if you did not get a question answered to your satisfaction, or if you have a, a different question um, or even a comment. Some of you were, were literally just, you know, telling us your thoughts. All of those things are, are super valid. Um, we, we don't take offense to anything and um, we will try to calm any situation down or, or escalate it if it needs to be escalated. So please do not hesitate. Um, Christina, can you put up our last panel? Doesn't, I think it has a, our contact information on it, the last PowerPoint slide. If it doesn't, 
we're all everybody here is going to be getting a, a follow up message and then we we learned some things that we can do to help promote a little bit more specifically about getting some of the the information out about um, street outreach programs and who to call and and so on and so forth. But again, if you have um, specific questions or comments or you know things that you need to get passed on and you don't know who to pass them on to, we are a fantastic first resource. So please uh, send it to info at omahadowntown.org. You can also call the office and and leave a voicemail, and I will always get back and talk to you. Um, we, we, we are not able to answer everything, but generally speaking, I can get you in touch with someone who can answer a question if I can't. So I apologize to anyone that we weren't able to answer a specific question to or we didn't um, get in a little bit further. Um, before we go, I'd like to make sure that our panelists all have an opportunity to, to, um, to, to say thank you and, and anything that they want to add to it. Um, let's let's start with Calvin, our Lionsgate guy. Do you have anything you'd like to add at the end of this? Well, yeah, I would say, um, and I think Shelly and Captain kind of touched on it, uh, those low priority calls, uh, security presence might be able to help with some of those low priority calls before uh, police get there because they're prioritized. So it's going to take them a while to get there. So with some of those, um, you know, loitering or skateboarding, things like that, uh, call Lionsgate and uh, maybe we can help, um, uh, you know, clean up some of that stuff and just kind of take that off the police police department's plate since we're down there. Maybe we can kind of take it off their plate uh, so don't, they don't have to respond to some of those low priority calls. So how about Calvin and Shelly? We make sure that, that Shelly, we make sure that Cal and Calvin or, or if it's somebody else, maybe it's Robert, our actual officer, um, if you could get that information to them, either they could be on the same distribution list that you're using, or you can have the direct phone number, Shelly, to be able to call them. We also will include our Lionsgate phone numbers in, in all of the information that we share with the panelists. But I'm thinking specifically, Shelly, you have a, an immediate uh, ability to be able to get in touch with people. And uh, Calvin's right, our officers are down there and, and can sometimes diffuse the situation faster. Right. I agree. I think what I'll do is I should have email on this uh, where Christina sent the email. Calvin, I'll send you over my email and we can kind of go back and forth. I'll find out who you want to put on the list. It'll be good if we could inform your guys of the same things that we're informing the police department. So we just kind of couple those together and, and give ourselves a little more coverage where needed. Um, a lot of the things, like you said, are not high priority things, but they are important. And so if we can let your guys know what we're trying to address, it just helps keep the focus where it needs to be. So I will reach out to him actually right after this meeting, Calvin. Great. Thanks, Shelly. Shelly, while, while you're talking, do you have anything you want to add? I really don't. I think, like I said, we, we have to just kind of join forces with different groups. I think there were a lot of groups here today that can help us get where we need to be. I think um, one of the things we probably need to decide on as a group is if we can call out for the services that you're talking about, or do we call 911? And it would probably be beneficial to give our business owners, especially kind of a list of, of what are the calls and maybe where the priority is on that. What's the first call you should make and what situations do that and be very specific about you know, a, a gentleman that's just sleeping on your patio can be done with this phone call, whereas, you know, this requires police presence. You know, this is Shelly's email so that we can just draw attention to the matter. Yeah. Christina, um, I think it might behoove us to get together with all of our panelists and sort of pull some of this together. And then we can start to put together a, a message that, um, that is a little bit more than just, you know, these are a phone numbers. It, it could answer some of those questions. Um, Randy, would you like to say anything at the end? Uh, I, I would just say thank you to everybody for being here. Uh, communities across the country are having this exact same conversation um, I have for, for years now. Uh, and that's not to make us feel bad about what's happening in Omaha, but I think the real uh, takeaway, the positive takeaway is this is a conversation that's occurring between uh, business owners, the improvement district, people that live in the old market in downtown, um, the police department, service providers, and, and many others. And it's not uh, just to have like some kind of a knee-jerk reaction to say, let's uh, implement lots of punitive uh, ways to deal with this, but to have an, uh, an open and honest conversation about how to create solutions that really work for the entire community and everybody that lives and participates in it. The old market is a fantastic place to hang out. 
uh, and, and to go down and shop and eat and all those kinds of things. And I think uh, having these kinds of conversations with this broad, diverse group of individuals um, is, is really a way to, to keep it that way for years and years uh, as people who are experiencing homelessness uh, also experience it and enjoy the, the area as well. Yeah. It's their neighborhood too. Um, Captain, you have anything to close out with? Um, just first and foremost, thanks everybody for jumping on and I appreciate all the questions. I think that's one of the biggest things is we need to make sure that people are educated, including us, of the concerns and to be able to ask other people questions, but also for them to come to the police department and feel free to, to ask any questions that they might have. The communication component is huge, and especially right now as we roll into our busy season. I mean, we're, as everybody knows, we're going to be really rolling into a lot of visitors, a lot of people coming down to the to the area, and we want them to A, feel safe, but we want our businesses and everybody else to be thriving and our residents to be happy as well. So appreciate the opportunity. And again, if anybody has any questions, you can always be through the email or call. We'll, we'll be more than happy. And Linda, about last but not least. Thanks for having us. This is a very difficult issue. We understand that there's, it's homelessness is a complex problem. We are happy to be part of the discussions to figure out how we can all work together to resolve, you know, some of these issues into, um, as Captain put it, make the businesses thrive downtown and really have great areas that everyone can enjoy. There's a lot of fine lines between people's rights and the right to be somewhere and what is happening. So um, I think this is a first step. I look forward to more discussions and how we can all work together to try to improve some of the problems that folks are facing. Thank you. And actually, last but not least, we've got uh, Chip Allen, who again is representing all of our businesses, or the, the old market businesses down here. Uh, thank you very much for having me today, and thank you everyone for being here. Uh, again, I think it's open that we keep, I think it's important that we keep the lines of communication open in regards to the issues that we're having in the area. We really encourage individuals that are in the old market area specifically to join the old market association. Uh, it's very imperative. We communicate with each other, meet with each other regularly to be able to address these types of issues. Thank you. And and while we talked about old market a heck of a lot down here, th these are clearly issues that we're seeing all over and cer certainly up in the Central Business District, North Downtown Capital District. Um, we just um, have seen some huge successes in and building those lines of communications between businesses and residents in Old Market, specifically through the program that uh, Shelly and Captain Bill Castro and Chip and everyone have put together. So we use it as kind of an example as to what other neighborhoods can do. Um, again, we, we all live down here. It is the urban fabric, um, but we've got people on this panel that are residents, businesses, downtown employees, property owners. We had a huge, huge, wide variety of people that were listening in today. Um, and everybody has a different experience. Everybody has a different perspective. And um, our job is to try to sort of find all of those and find that sweet spot where we can all come together. So again, thank you all so much. Thank you, a huge thank you to our panelists, but, uh, and to Christina Randall, again, our communications director who put all this together. She's just a fabulous uh, rock to have in my team. Um, and a thank you, huge thank you to all of our panelists and to those of you who asked questions and threw things out there in the chat. Um, really, really fantastic. It just is, um, it's nice to see everybody getting involved and we will continue to do these. And again, if you have questions or concerns that we weren't able to get to today, it doesn't matter if it's about homelessness or alleys or street lighting or whatever it is, please call and, and let us know so that we can either answer your question or get you to the person that can answer your question. Again, the downtown improvement district doesn't do, um, doesn't have a lot of uh, city services um, but we work very closely with all of the city services. So if you have some sort of an issue, if it's not something we take care of, we can help you find the person who can help. So um, with that being said, I would like to thank everyone again for being here and uh, we'll get some more information out. And the DID will work with our panelists to uh, put together an, a nice piece of um, uh, information that we can get out that will have easy access to phone numbers and things like that. Um, some of the other, the, the last two solutions I want to throw out there that have uh, the most effect, uh, most efficacy that we have seen are working with the police department to get the, um, the closed property or the no trespassing sign that has the exact language that they need to be able to enforce it as a closed property. It's not just a sign you get at Menards that says private property. 
It's actually a sign that, that has some language from the ordinance and, it, and it's a specific sign. That is the easiest and fastest way that, that they can actually move folks off who are truly trespassing. Um, the other thing that I was thinking of when we were talking about that is I've seen other cities that have signs with street outreach phone numbers on it so that someone's walking by and maybe they don't feel comfortable asking someone to move, they could call street, street outreach or the person experiencing homelessness or the issue can see the sign and call. So that would be something that I think the DID would be interested in, in doing is getting together some sort of a um, communication like that, a public service announcement, kind of a piece that we can put up in, in, in places that we see a lot of activity. So um, again, all we're trying to do is find compassionate solutions. We all 